This I'm gonna turn conference over to, will now be recorded. I'm going to turn it over to Jack and Diego to take it from here and um, educate everyone on the product. Thank you, Doug. I'm going to just kick this thing off and then I'll hand it off to uh, to Jack. But uh, Doug, thank you very much for putting everybody on the line. I hope everybody, number one, is safe and at home. And, and uh, these are obviously challenging times. Um, you know, we are, we're an Italian based company in, in one of the countries that has been hit the hardest. And uh, we are at the epicenter of this coronavirus in Brescia, which is in Northern Italy, north of uh, near Milan. Uh, the plant is still running, offices are shut down, but uh, we here in the United States, the, the good news is guys, we have product on the ground. We don't have to have uh, any delay of containers arriving from Italy. So we do have product to sell. Uh, I do want to thank Doug. Doug and I have known each other now for a couple of years, and uh, uh, I didn't uh, hesitate when it came time to figuring out who I wanted to partner with as our distributor rep for this product. Um, you know, Cook Air and Level Solutions is a top-notch organization, and uh, I know that all of you guys have boxes to sell. The unique thing about our box is that your competition down the street doesn't have it. And I think the one thing that you'll walk away from here is that, yeah, we only got a couple SKUs, a couple models, so you don't have to memorize a whole lot of model numbers and whatnot. Um, but you guys have a really unique opportunity with a niche product that is what we call in Italy a comfort solution product, really fits um, solving a solution. Um, it, it can replace p -tax. It can be something that becomes a solution versus a mini split or even a, a, a through the wall unit. I'll let Jack get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of the product, but I just wanna say uh, on behalf of the Olympia Splendid team back in Italy, uh, that uh, we want you guys to be safe out there, um, stay home. This is not uh, something to be uh, taken um, uh, without recognizing how serious this is i'm telling you that because we have people at the factory that have been affected by it as well so be safe out there guys we appreciate you guys stepping in this morning and being part of this uh training ask as many questions as you have uh like you like doug said you can unmute your um your mic um and, and ask questions and we want as many as you can get um so again thank you guys for partnering with us we're looking forward to uh, uh, a good 2020 once we get past this situation we're in. And uh, if there's anything that I can do, uh, please let us know. But I'll turn it over to Jack. And uh, thank you very much again for your, uh, for your time today. All right. Thank you, Diego. And first of all, I, I would just like to say that I'm, I'm going to make, uh, let's see here. I'm going to. Okay, I have just uh, turned off everyone's microphone because some people were coming through uh, with a lot of static. So I've turned off every microphone and I will turn them all back on again uh, as soon as, uh, you know, very shortly so that if you have questions, you can ask. But when you're not asking a question, I would ask you to keep yourself muted. And if you look at the attendee list, uh, you can see on the right of the left of your name is either a, uh, a speaker or a microphone that is uh, got a red line through it. If you're not speaking and if you want to speak, then just turn yours on and, and uh, then you can ask your question, which I very much encourage. OK, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn everyone's back on and. Again, I would ask each of you, because if I leave them off, then you can't ask a question. But if you turn your own off, you can then turn your own back on. So I will, I've just turned them all back on again, and I would ask again for you to self-mute yourself, okay? So <clears throat> again, uh, uh, one of the things that I'm incredibly pleased with is we have 57 attendees right now, and that's amazing. And I want, as Diego said, thank you for your business. Thank you for taking the time to be here. I, I will try to make this as, as uh, educational as possible. In, in my world, we refer to something called death by PowerPoint, and I'm going to try to avoid that. So if, you know, we'll interspace some things, we'll ask some questions. 
Uh, and then we will make sure that everybody gets, after this meeting, I will make the PowerPoint presentation in a PDF format available to uh, whoever would like to download it for their own edification. Because this uh, file has about 170 slides on it, and we're not going to be doing all of those because that goes into some of the uh, nuts and bolts of, of the service side, and we will use that information at another time. So this is going to be primarily a sales and marketing uh, presentation of introduce the product. And then, uh, but you will have all that information that you can use for your customers. And as a reminder, this type of, uh, of meeting can be done almost at any time. So if you have a customer or two have that they want you to go to their office and maybe you want to show it to them, you could always get a hold of me and say, hey, can you do a quick webinar with my people, uh, my customer? And I can tell you that unless I'm already committed to something else, uh, that that can be done at virtually any time. So I'm an early riser. I'm on the East Coast. I'm usually up and working by five o'clock, six o'clock at the latest. Uh, so feel free to contact me anytime. So for those of you that I have not met, my name is Jack Bartell. I am manager of technical services for North America. And uh, of course I report directly to Diego. And then uh, my background is about 50 years in this industry. In fact, exactly 50 years. And I used to be the manager of technical services for uh, York International, then I was their manager of training, and then I was with a distributor for the last 15 years, also as director of technical services. So my background is in, in the, on the technical side and the training side. And as I mentioned earlier, ask questions whenever you want. You can wait till the end. I'm going to have some slides that will give us a chance to, to ask questions. But I tend to believe that when people wait to ask questions, they sometimes forget to, to ask them. So uh, again, don't hesitate. And, and just so you know, I always like to tell people that I am, uh, I do two things in my world, and that is work and also fish. So uh, if you ever find your way to the Virginia region and you want to go fishing, we can always uh, make that happen. And we can talk about business out on the boat. And then I can give Diego the bill for the fuel. So that'll work out good for everybody. This is just a quick, I'm not going to spend much time on this, but the uh, the company, or La Familia, uh, the current board director chairman is Mr. Roberto Sacconi. And this, this company has been in business since 1956, which was a very good year because that was the year I was born. But they have sold all over the world and except for the United States or North America. So Diego was their first hire in North America to get that market up and running. Essentially, we're creating a new business here in the US. And I have to tell you that so far, with the exception of the crapola going on right now with the virus, it's been very successful. We are pleased as punch with the reception we've had about this product. So again, uh, this is a little look at our, our, our global footprint where you can see we are in North America, Asia, Europe, of course, and, and uh, South America, and of course, Australia. So uh, it's a company that has a global footprint, and they are very proud of the fact that we can manufacture in Brescia, Italy, and then ship all over the world, a product that has the quality that you might expect. So the, 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 the first product we want to talk about is the one where I guess most proud of and, and want to promote to the greatest extent in North America, and that is the Maestro product. So we currently have two sizes of the Maestro product, a 9,212 BTU unit, at, which is the smart, and then we have the 11,600 BTU unit, which is the pro. And I'm gonna go through the differences between them as we move forward. But one of the things I think I wanna you know, look very clearly at is we call it Maestro with no outdoor unit because this is a self-contained unit. And from the outside of the building, as you can see in the upper left-hand corner here, you, the only thing you see on the outside of the building are two eight-inch grills. And these, and, and you can see here and the second one from the left on the bottom, uh, it's installed right below a window. And if you look on the far right, where there are multiple uh, 
grills being shown. These were all installed on the high end, if you will. So these can be installed either four inches from the ceiling or four inches from the floor uh, or anywhere in between. And then this is all that you see on the outside. So in Europe, you can't mount a mini split unit outside. You can't put a, a window unit in there because it destroys the architectural ambiance, the, the, the look and feel of the building. So that's originally why these units were designed in Italy and then are now being uh, distributed all over the world. So again, this is an Italian design, designed in Italy, and these units are actually manufactured in Italy as well, as Diego mentioned earlier, in Brescia. So uh, it's a, a pure system is what they call for their, their uh, filtering system, and it is uh, very easily maintained. As you can see, the, the filters are accessible there on the second picture from the right or on the right and, and the bottom one very easy to get to the maintenance is, is quite easy that and any consumer uh, can do it quite easily so again uh, all you see on the outside of those two grills and, and keep in mind that the, a lot of the details I'm talking about right now are both apply to both the pro and the smart model even though we're starting off with the smart model so Every unit comes with a remote control, and that is the user interface, if you will, for the consumer. These are a patented design, so no one else in the world has anything like it. So at least for a few years, and I know what the design cycle is for any manufacturer, uh, two years at an accelerated rate, three years is more or less the norm. So for at least the next three years, you're probably going to be the only people that have this product. And if you look on the lower right here, we have STC and OITC. And those are sound numbers that are used for many cities like New York, Chicago, or perhaps Atlanta, uh, any large city, they will have restrictions on the kind of equipment you can use based on the amount of sound that it allows to transfer from inside to outside. Okay, so STC is sound transmission class, ITC is outdoor indoor transmission class. And you can see the numbers there are STC 36 and OITC 25. No one can have a number higher than that. Ours is the highest rated unit. In, in, and by comparison, think of a PTAC, which is you know, a, a also self-contained, but the difference between our unit and a PTAC are two things. One, we only need two eight-inch holes between the indoor or to the outside wall. And two, ours is not ugly and it's not loud. So, but by comparison, they both uh, have sound transmission, sound transmission class and the ratings. And uh, there's not a single PTAC out there that can come close to these numbers. Another competitive advantage. The warranty is quite good. The warranty is seven years on the compressor, two years on parts. And if the compressor fall, fails within the first year, we simply replace the unit. And the replaced unit would have to be returned to one of our service centers or to myself because we'll want to know why. And, and I will give you a quick understanding of the warranty rate. So, and again, uh, bear in mind, I worked for a manufacturer for quite some time and I was involved with warranty in a very active way. So typically a manufacturer of HVAC products bases their uh, warranty failure rate on three uh, pieces of criteria. How many parts fail within the first 30 days? How many parts fail within the first year? How many parts fail within the first five years? Now keeping in mind that this product, the, the Maestro Smart has been on the market for nine years or more, right around nine years. And there are almost a half a million of these installed around the world. And the when I worked for, for a manufacturer, if we had a failure rate less than 2%, we thought we were geniuses because that is a very, very acceptable number when you're dealing with large volumes of equipment. The failure rate on this product is point zero zero two percent and i mean to tell you that is darn near perfect so 
failure parts or parts failing is not something that we see a great deal of. So <clears throat> every unit gets installed. Oh, I don't know why that that's not supposed to be there. Let's. Uh, hmm. All right, I've got to fix this slide, but uh, the unit comes with a template, and this template you know unfolds. It's about two foot by or three foot by two foot, and you mount it on the wall. And keeping in mind, this has to be installed on an outside wall. So this gives you all the uh, measurements you need to mark and cut your holes. Okay, so you make two holes in the wall for the intake and exhaust, then one three-quarter inch hole for the drain, and then you mount the wall bracket, and then you make a hole for again for the condensation line. So it's it, that that is the extent of the installation process there after mounting the bracket. Okay, you then have to put in the ductwork. And the unit ships with the ductwork. And here you see the duct just kind of laid out on the ground. It's black plastic. And then you fold that plastic and roll it to whatever size you need. So it's either an eight inch hole or it's a six and a half inch hole, uh, depending on your application. And then you put a piece of tape on the top of the seam and the bottom of the seam. And when you install it into the wall, you install it so that the seam is on the top. Was there a question? Okay. Uh, so now you want to install, after you've put in the duct, you want to put the grills on the outside wall. And the grills fold in half. Because let's say you're doing an application on the second floor, third floor, 48th floor. Setting up a ladder to put your grills on can be rather time consuming and take a lot of uh, effort. So the, the unit ships with grills and the unit ships with uh, the duct as well as springs and chains. So you attach the springs and chains to the grill, you stick it through the wall, holding onto the chain, and then you release the grill and it basically opens up again. Then you pull the grill to the wall, attach the spring to the inside ring, and you are completely done outside. Theoretically, you don't have to go outside at all. And there you see a picture of the springs and the chains and the mounting hardware. And of course, if you look at the mounting hardware here, th this would be what you would use if your wall can support 86 pounds with these bolt with this mounting hard but if your wall is a different material you may you have to use and supply your own mounting hardware to ensure the wall and the mounting will hold the weight of the product so here you see the the, the two grills and the two rings so you have one ring and one grill for the condenser air exhaust and one for the condenser air intake and then below that, you see the uh, bracket that mounts on the wall. And as mentioned earlier, each of the units comes with a remote control. And if you look on here, it, it, there's a red circle here that is uh, circling the F, which means Fahrenheit. And one thing to keep in mind is that in the smart product, the remote control that you get is either Fahrenheit, which we will get in all of our units, but if someone just moved here from Europe and they want it in Celsius, that is an accessory that you order. On the Pro model, which we'll talk about uh, shortly, uh, that unit or that remote has a button on it where you can switch from Celsius to Fahrenheit, so uh, it's a much easier thing to do on, on the Pro. And you can see it's got this little circle here where you can mount it if uh, on the wall so that you know it's always in the correct place. And then the on the right hand side here, you see that the plug is 115 volt. So all you do once you've got your holes drilled and your duct and your grills on, you the unit just mounts on the bracket and then you plug it into a 115 volt outlet. Your installation is done. You're not heating and air conditioning. So it is a, a GFI plug on the end. So it is uh, self-protected. 
And in the installation instructions, it says a dedicated circuit is recommended. However, it is not required. So if you have a existing wall outlet, you can just plug it in. And as long as that outlet does not have two refrigerators on it and, and, a, and a microwave oven or whatever, as long as the load is just a couple of uh, lights and maybe whatever, a, a standard 15 volt circuit will be more than adequate, or I'm sorry, 15 amp will be more than adequate. So again, this is just a quick short video here of, of there is a rotating flap that you can uh, allow to rotate up or down continuously, or you can set it for whichever path or direction you want the air to flow very easily. But I'm not going to go through that video just so that we can uh, continue on. But if you have a building that has a glass installation, not a problem whatsoever because that has already been resolved. We had an installation up in Canada where these fellows uh, basically sourced clear plastic grill to mount on the outside, uh, you know, to cut the glass and then put it on the outside. And then they built a little frame, if you will, out of composite material, painted it white. And then you can see on the right hand picture there that it's mounted on the, on, uh, in the glass and, and a very, very nice installation. So, uh, we are certainly open to and will help with any kind of application you have. And if we need to get alternative uh, installation materials for that, we, we will help you uh, gather those things up. So this is a, it's a heat pump. So it heats the air in the wintertime and it cools the air in the summertime. And so uh, this is just the refrigeration. There's nothing difficult or different about this refrigeration cycle than any other standard refrigeration system that has some additional uh, sensors and it has some a very, very accurate algorithm in the control board to ensure this unit does exactly what you'd like. But again, nothing different than a standard refrigerant. So we're not gonna go through the refrigerant system today. Uh, but of course, in the outside, a uh, uh, cooling operation, bringing in the warm air from, uh, Outside and then exporting or, or exhaust uh, air that is uh, extracting the heat from the refrigerant outside. And so the inside air and the outside air, uh, you know, the air that's in the space and the air that goes from the outside are completely separate from one another. So no outdoor air is mixed with inside air, nor is the humidity from the outside or the humidity from the inside mixed with the outside air. And again, these are just all of the different uh, components in the unit. And uh, I, I guess I'm, uh, my goal here is to try to have us done in an hour. But if we have any uh, questions afterward, we could certainly stay longer. So I'm not going to go through every component here right now, but you'll have this information later. Uh, and one of the things when we go, I'm just going to go back a little bit here, uh, the condensate slinger. One of the things that we do is in the summertime, there's almost no condensate because we take the condensate that's produced and we pump it up to uh, the evaporator coil or the indoor coil, which is acting as the, I'm sorry, the outdoor coil, which is acting as the condenser. And then it evaporates on that condenser, making the unit more efficient. And it goes out through the exhaust air as vapor. So in the summertime, you'll have little to no condensate. Hey, Jack, uh, this is Doug. I uh, one question we're going to get, I'm sure, I'm surprised somebody didn't already pop it up, is how many of these parts do we have stocked in your warehouse in the U.S.? Every Should part a, that is, every part that we feel would be potentially, a, a, could fail. For instance, all relays, all boards, all motors, uh, uh, grills, uh, brackets, you know, somebody might lose a grill or lose a bracket. Uh, every component is in our warehouse in New Jersey currently, and so it's in stock, and it can be shipped same day. If we get an order in by noon, we can typically ship it same day. Of course, the part would be shipped at whatever the cost is for you as a distributor plus the shipping, so it can go ground if it's not in a hurry, or it can go overnight if you need it overnight. So 
Uh, I will also supply for you a list of the parts along with a list, and I'll show it to you later. Basically, I took a picture of every part next to the part number so somebody could bring you in a part and say, I want this. They may not even know what it is, but you can look on the parts list and see that. So we've got that covered. So again, uh, from an installation perspective, these are all the components that come with the unit. So everything required ships with the unit, okay? Gasketing, intake grills, flanges, duct sleeves, screws, everything, okay? Hey, uh, Diego, this is Darren. Yeah. Curious how much static, I know it can't go very far, but um, say you wanted to make a, a right-hand turn down and through it. Cannot, let me, let me stop you right there. These units have to be installed on an outside wall. Okay. And the, it has to have a straight duct with no bends and no elbows, and it cannot be longer than 39 inches. So if you have an application that's an inside wall and you wanted to add an elbow and some length to it, all we can tell you is we simply cannot accommodate that application. And I'll explain why. If we wanted to make this unit to where it could accommodate that type of thing. The result would be a unit that has a larger motor and much greater sound. And to avoid that, because then we're going to basically uh, destroy the whole design principle. We have decided, and I should say uh, Olympia Splendid has decided that the few applications that we can't match because of that it is worth the price to ensure that the units are both quiet and efficient. So, so three feet essentially, give or take a couple inches there, straight lines as far as it go. Uh, 39 okay. is the maximum length that's allowable. Yeah, okay. And like I said, for the most part, an outside wall, you know, to see an outside wall that would be more than uh, you know, 12 inches to, you know, depending on the kind of construction it is, is going to be rare. But let's say you have a, an application in a, in a knee wall, which in effect is, is uh, an inside wall, but the knee wall is very short, let's call it 12 inches, and then you have an outside wall. That's an application you can meet because you're going to go straight through and to the outside, even though technically it's an inside wall as long as the length of the duct between the wall and the outdoor grill is less than 36 inches, or I'm sorry, 39, you're good to go. Hey, Jack, let me jump in here real quick while we're on this slide. And one thing I wanna point out um, is everything that the contractor will need to install this unit is in the box. And that's where the rubber hits the road when you're talking to your customers on installed cost and equipment cost. Yeah, we're probably gonna be more expensive than that made in China uh, PTAC or room air um, unit. But when you look at installed cost, which is really what you have to look at, there is no installation materials you'll need other than what we provide in the box. Of course, they'll need a way to make the two penetrations in the wall. But other than that, everything you need from wall sleeves to gasketing, mounting bracket, the whole nine yards, again, and it, there's a plug on it, Jack, Jack will show you, you plug it into a wall like your microwave oven, that's where we have the advantage over some of our competitive or products that we fall into the same category. So keep that in mind, guys, when Doug has forwarded you the pricing or will soon, yeah, we may be more expensive up front, but in the long run, when you look at the overall project, we are going to have an advantage because we don't have line sets, duct work have to have the electrician out to come in and run on a separate circuit. So I thought I'd just jump in here, Jack. I'll, I'll, I'll shut up now, but I wanted to, to throw those two cents in. No, I appreciate that. And if, if you jump in too often, I'm just going to mute you anyway. So just keep that in mind. Hey, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> yes. This is Eric Scott. Is there a 24 volt interface uh, available? So we, we, we have an interface that will be made available. And in, in, in Italy, the factory has a, uh, 
a Wi-Fi interface and and a, and a, and a you know a, a one that can uh, connect up for remote access. And but we found one in the United States that we feel is superior, and we're making a a, a deal with this manufacturer to allow us to do that. But there's one thing that I have yet to confirm, which is, is and I believe there is, I just haven't been able to confirm it, is there a uh, set of contacts on the unit that you can connect two wires to, and then with a dry contact, say normally open dry contact that closes, will turn the unit on, okay? I don't know, I, I don't think there is, but there might be, and I will try to get that validated in the next day or so and let you know. But I will show you. That. I can answer that question. There, there is no 24 volt, okay, to the unit. Um, we do have a wall mounted stat option. The unit comes with the remote control that Jack showed you there. But we tried to work with another thermostat manufacturer, um, Venstar, that uh, was was looking to do some OEM stats for us, and they required a 24 volt signal, which our unit did not have. So if you if you're asking for can I put a wall mounted stat to control this unit? The answer is yes. We have our own OEM uh, wireless uh, thermostat, so it's not hardwired, but there is no 24 volt signal for this unit. So, and again, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I wasn't suggesting that there was a 24 volt, but there may, what I'm not sure of is, is there a contact that has an open or closed circuit? Or, or you know that we're a dry contact and turn it on. So the dry contact would have no voltage applied to it, other than what the per, the, the, the terminals on the unit would provide. And whether that's 24 volt or whether it's five volts DC, I don't know. But I will get that answer uh, and make sure that we get it out to everyone. Can I well, can I ask a follow up question real quick? Sure. So you know an application that this would be great for obviously is hotels, like what you've mentioned. Uh, in the States, have you ever run into a situation with, like, hotels that standardize on, say, income, and they want to be able to tie into your unit? That's kind of where I was leading with that question. Well, again, so let me uh, – I'm going to very quickly turn on, I think. Uh, Jack, while you do that, let me just quickly answer that. So we are looking at working with a um, manufacturer that has some type of an in-com stat that has room sensors for hotels. So we're already thinking about that, and that's something that we're looking at. What Jack is showing you is more of a wide, more of an app-based controller. But, um, yeah, it's something we're looking at, not currently available today as far as having something like an in-com stat. Here. So this device that I'm showing is, uh, I think, it's absolutely perfect for our application because this does nothing more than you download their app and then you take the remote control from your unit and using the app, it basically sucks out all the information from the existing remote and uh, replicates that. So it does a Vulcan mind meld and it now can do everything that the remote can do. And you can mount it anywhere in the room it, it does require power and it comes with a power source, but then you can access it remotely from anywhere in the world as long as there is Wi-Fi in that application. And then let's say you have a job where you're gonna have multiple units. Let's say it's an apartment complex and there are uh, rent, or they're all rental units and there's 35 of them in the building. Going to the desktop app, you can look at all 35 of them and control them, and there's no cost for that. So this will be available as an accessory, and it will give you the ability to, because a lot of like hotels and, and apartments, remotes aren't really something they like to see because remotes can take a walk, but this can be mounted on the wall, and then it doesn't go anywhere, and it, and it can be accessed from anywhere. So it, it's one of the things we're looking at, okay? And I won't make you look at me the whole time, so I'm going to turn this off. So hopefully that, that addresses your question, and we will have other uh, options as well. Hey, Jack, one more question, and I apologize for hogging time. but No, uh, we have all the time we need. Inverter compressor? So uh, I will certainly get to that, and it's a very good question. The smart unit is single stage. 
compressor. So essentially for the operation of the compressor, it's on or off, on or off. The Pro, which we'll be talking about next, is in fact an inverter driven compressor. So it will go from uh, 35% approximately to 100% capacity. And both the indoor and outdoor fan motors are ECM or electronically commutated motors. And so they can be controlled through a, a PWM signal to whatever speed matches the application's requirements at the time. So the pro version, which is the larger capacity version, is inverter driven. The smart is, I guess we refer to it as our entry level product, 9,212 BTUs of cooling, but it is single stage. And there are uh, a number of other questions that are in the, the database here. And when we get to our first area, I'll, I'll go through and I'll address each of those. So again, here's the uh, black sleeve. And again, showing you that you're gonna cut it to your whatever length, okay? And then again, uh, here's how you put it through the wall. And note here, and this is important, okay? That this is, uh, whoop. when you put the sleeve through, you wanna drill your hole so that it is a slight pitch to the outside. And in doing so, if any water comes in through the grill, uh, it will just run back out again, no harm, no foul. And again, these are just examples of what not to do. You see oval holes, you see oversized holes. So uh, we encourage people to follow as closely as possible what our requirements are. And, and if you do have a standard construction wall like we have in throughout the United States, that is easily done with, with a sawzall. But if you have a, a, a concrete or brick or stone, which is what they have a great deal of in, in, in Europe, then you would have to purchase a, a core bit. And those are available from a number of sources. In fact, we're gonna to put together a list to say, if you want one, here are a couple of places that you can order them from. And uh, you know, so that just makes it much easier for you to uh, make that hole the correct size. Okay. And again, you want to use uh, only the material. So you see what they did here was a little bit of, you know, uh, out of the ordinary and, and was not as workable as it should have been. So uh, if, if the instructions are followed as they are intended and written, no problems with installation. Okay. So again, you can see some things here that just don't make sense for us. But uh, now we are looking at, and this is the grill that comes with it. And, and if you look up there, it says only original factory supplied grills should be used or third party approved grills or equivalent free section grills are permitted. Otherwise the factory warranty can be voided. So we are working with a couple of different vendors because you may want to have a rectangular grill just because of the appearance and how it fits into the, the uh, architectural design of the building. But if that's going to be done, we have to make sure that we are not reducing the airflow or changing the characteristics of the air that's flowing into the unit because that could impact capacity and efficiency. So, uh, you know, we're, if you have an idea for something and or someone that says, hey, can I use this? If you run it past me, I can take a look at it and say, well, I think that should be fine. Or I would say, stay away from it. But we would like to be involved with that decision so that we reduce the amount of units that may have issues in the field, okay? Now it says here, no mesh or filters or in the grids, okay? Except those approved as an accessory by Olympia Splendid. And so I'm doing some testing right now on some, because I'm actually currently in Florida and they have uh, geckos and bugs that are as big as geckos. And, and so they want something to prevent these uh, 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 critters from coming in. And so I'm looking at a, a, a type of grill, or I'm sorry, a type of mesh that would be small enough to allow it to be installed 
yet large enough to not restrict the airflow to a detrimental level. So for instance, if you have, a, if you, as I mentioned earlier, you can put in an eight inch grill or eight inch duct or a 6.4 inch duct. If you put in a 6.4 inch duct, you suffer a little bit, not much, but a little bit of capacity and efficiency loss. So my goal will be to develop a, a grid that we can put inside for, to, to prevent the critters, but it will have no more and hopefully considerably less impact on an eight inch installation than it would be if it were the six and a half installation, which is already approved. So uh, that, that will be coming down the road. So again, when you install either bottom or top installation, the unit's air distribution flap can be configured for high wall or low wall, and there's just an instruction on, on how to do that. Again, the unit automatically drains the condensate during the cooling season. And there was a question earlier about where does the condensate go? Well, just like on a mini split, you have to drill the hole outside, okay? So it's a three quarter inch hole that you'll drill and it can go right out the wall. Or if you're in an area where there are restrictions to that, then you can keep it inside the wall and go to a drain that's nearby, or you can put a small condensate pump at the bottom and pump it to where it has to go. And, and that would also be the recommendation if you are in an area where you would have significant operational time below 32 degrees where the condensate can freeze. So uh, again, you see that bottom picture there, it shows you know, that it's pitched slightly down and it's just going outside. But you, there are two drains on the unit. There's one that goes out the back and then there's another one that goes straight through the bottom. And you get to use whichever one makes the most sense. And here you see the condensation uh, slinger, which again, this is just to show you how it's uh, controlled. There are two floats in the unit. The lower float is a normally open switch that when it closes, as the water level rises and closes, it takes in the cooling mode, it pumps the condensate up to the slinger and it just flows across the condenser and evaporates. In winter mode, we can't do that. So it doesn't get activated in the winter mode. And then there's a second float that if the drain becomes clogged, it does nothing more than turn the unit off. So it's a normally closed switch that opens. And when it opens, that says, I have too much water, I don't wanna flood my space. And so there is an alarm for that that you would see. And then typically the correction to that is uh, unclogging the drain line or cleaning the drain pan uh, or ensuring that the floats are working correctly, that sort of thing. So that's a, a simple troubleshooting uh, action for anyone uh, that, you know, there's a, a service oriented individual, okay? And there you see the condensate flow switch number one. And kind of say flow switch up. One is lower, one is higher. Okay. And again, uh, the slinger is up along the top of the condenser coil. And there you see just a look of the, you know, that's actually what it looks like uh, on the unit itself with the back cover taken off. There is a check valve in the system for uh, ensuring that our refrigerant flows in the proper direction. And there you see a check valve also for. Uh, condensate management. And there's also Matt, a drain. Yes, go ahead. Uh, looking at the, the piping and the pictures you're having, is there any service valves on this unit? Or is this a sealed unit? It, it's a self-contained unit. And, and again, that's a question that I will get answered for you. I, I have a breakdown of parts that show a service valve, but I haven't seen one. So I'm going to say that currently until I can confirm otherwise that there are no service valves. In other words, uh, when, and I believe that is the case that there are none. So the intent is if, first of all, service valves are, are, are potential sources of leak. And so if you don't need them, they're better off left out. And I think that's the tack that was taken. But so that is correct, Jack, that's correct. There are no service valve. This is a sealed unit. There is no contact with the refrigerant. You guys have a kit that you provide then 
on a compressor replacement for the seven years that does put we, taps on the system somehow then? We do not, but we can certainly do so because all it would involve is installing a field because you're going to have to open the refrigerant system anyway. If you, let's say it's a compressor uh, uh, failure uh, or a reversing valve failure, whatever the refrigerant part is, you would have to put on a removable service valve, you know, one that you, like you would use for a, a room air conditioner that pierces the unit. You install that, recover your refrigerant if it's not already gone, replace your part, and then you remove that portable one and you install a T into that line that has a service valve. And, and then now you would have service access and it would just be the technician's responsibility to ensure that it is installed and brazed in uh, correctly using nitrogen, just like you would with any replacement. And, and uh, that, that would be, the, because again, if you think about the failure rate we have, it is very, very low. So it's all yeah, about- Let me jump in here real quick, guys. Uh, let me make this really clear. Um, the reason that I came up with the seven year compressor warranty, and you guys that are all seasoned HVAC guys out there, if the compressor is not gonna fail in the first year, it's not gonna fail. And the reason I put seven years on it because of a new product that isn't known, I wanted it to be, for lack of a better term, a very sexy warranty that was appealing not only to the contractor, but gave the, the end user peace of mind. So if your compressor fails, we're going to give you a brand new unit. That's our one year guarantee that if the compressor fails in the first 12 months, no questions asked, take the old unit off the wall, hang the new, new, new unit on. There's no other installation that needs to take place. The holes are already there. We're not going to start messing with the refrigerant circuit. Now we are going to be setting up, and Jack is in charge of this, of what we call service centers around the United States. That if we get a unit that does require a compressor, a compressor replacement, that we can have a service center do that. And let's say that it's outside of those first 12 months, then we would probably go that route. But I can tell you, based on the fact this unit's been sold for 20 years all over Europe and other parts of the world with the failure rate, that, uh, the warranty rate that, that Jack touched on, you guys won't have a failure, failed compressor. And if you do, we're gonna take care of you guys, get you a new unit. Because to get into this unit, guys, it's a pretty compact unit. There's a lot of um, things inside and it's not the easiest thing to start going in and start changing out a compressor. So we're going to do the right thing and take care of the customer. And, and, and because we're using LG rotary compressors, could they have a bad batch of compressors? Absolutely. What we want to make sure we do is we take care of you guys as cook air and level solutions. And then we'll deal with LG if there's a bad batch, but rest assured that you got hundred percent backing. If something goes wrong with the compressor, we're going to give you a new unit if it's within those first 12 months or work with you guys if it's literally just outside those. But you guys all know that typically compressors will fail relatively quickly if it's a bad compressor. So when I was uh, at the factory in Italy back before this, anybody even knew what coronavirus was uh, back in November, I sat with the service staff in the office and then I visited a service center uh, very close to Brescia, and this particular service center, their modus operandi, if you will, is if a unit breaks down, they go to the house, and they take it off the wall, they put a replacement on the wall, they bring it back to their office, and they troubleshoot it there, regardless of what it is. They even do that with maintenance, where they'll go and, and uh, bring it back to their office, and they clean it at their office, and then they go back and they take the other one off the wall. And so we have a larger territory here in the United States, if you will. And so that's not my expectation that every contractor will do that, for, especially for maintenance, because it, it's very really quite easy to, to, to maintain uh, and to clean. But if, if we are going to have a compressor replacement, then it's certainly an option for them so that the people still have heating or air, that they keep a unit that they use for service purposes. You know? So uh, anyway, as Diego mentioned, it will be my responsibility to get these service centers in place. And, and I will need help from you folks because by a service center, what I mean is a contractor. So a contractor that would meet a set of criteria that we provide in terms of how well they do service, 
And I mean, if I show up at somebody's office and they don't have a recovery machine or a, or a, or a micron gauge, chances are they're not getting that stamp of approval. It has to be a contractor that takes pride in their work and that we would have no issue having them have a sign on their wall that says authorized Olympia Splendid Service Center. And so if you think about your contractors, ones that you might target for sales or that you have other opportunities already in place, if you have a suggestion, feel free to let me know because we'd love to talk with them. At some point after the coronavirus thing is done, we wouldn't have mind visiting with them and then uh, doing training to show them what the product is about, getting into the nuts and bolts of the service side. And, and then if they uh, want to be a service center and they meet that criteria, we will make it so. And again, this is just showing what happens with the condensate drain actuator, which basically turns on and turns off for either heating or cooling. Mm -hmm. And again, if you needed to drain the unit manually, it's just a matter of removing a plug and you can uh, remove that from the bottom. If the, let's say the drain is blocked or for whatever reason, okay? And then there are uh, diagnostics, safety LED diagnostics. And again, I'm not gonna go through all of those uh, today, but we have, for our service folks, we have all of that available for them. Right down to wiring diagrams and alarms, understanding exactly what causes these different uh, things to happen. So that is essentially the installation and uh, to a small extent application for that unit. So uh, I'm gonna very quickly go through some of these questions that were typed in and see if I can't answer some of them. Okay, let's see. Do PTACs also have an STC ratings that we can use to compare and contrast? And then it's an excellent question and the answer is yes. And we have some competitive literature that I can share with you. And the intent will be that we'll make a comparison chart that will show uh, what their values are by comparison to our values. And you're gonna find that's gonna be an excellent tool to use in your marketing because nobody comes close to our numbers. And, and that's just the plain truth. So I will be putting that together. Uh, if any of you currently use and sell uh, PTACs and you look in their technical literature, chances are you'll find it. And if you can forward me anything from a competitive PTAC, I will make sure it gets on the list. But I can tell you, we had the testing done at Intertech in Cortland, New York. And the sound people in that lab, when they did the testing on our unit, they literally stated, holy cow, no one's ever had numbers that high. And they test it all. All right. Next question. Are they variable speed compressors? And I think I covered that in that the uh, smart unit is single stage on off and the pro unit is multi-stage variable speed uh, technology. What is the HSPF? And the uh, HSPF is, and, and the numbers that would be provided by AHRI when our AHRI testing is completed will be forwarded to you uh, and, and included in our data. So uh, I don't have the final numbers right now, but I expect to have that hopefully. Uh, we we want to have one of our design engineers present when the AHRI testing is done. Currently, they're not allowed to leave their house, if you will, uh, let alone the country. So the original intent was to have that testing completed by the 1st of April, but the virus has given us an entirely different timeline. So as soon as that's done, we will have those uh, that data for you. Yeah, let me, then, let me jump on that HSPF question because Jack and I literally, literally talked about that last week. We had that from another rep uh, in California. Uh, all of the, the, our unit is classified by the Department of Energy as a room air conditioner, TTW, through the wall. And there are no um, 
competitive units, the, for example, a man makes a through the wall unit, not like ours, but, and then there's a lot of PTAC that are not even considered through the wall. None of those manufacturers, be PTAC or through the wall room airs, list an HSPF like we see on a direct expansion uh, central heat pump system. Jack and I thought it would be valuable to add it because I know sometimes contractors, when they hear heat pump, they want to know HSPF. Um, so we're going to add it to our technical data, but I will say that when we looked at all their competitors, they were not listing it. And the efficiency rating uh, for these type of units is rated in combined energy efficiency ratio, CEER, uh, which you guys will see there on the spec sheets, I believe that, that Doug sent out to you guys. So but we are going to add it so that it's an additional data point that you can uh, speak to. Uh, relative to the heating performance factor. So in our current literature, you can see the combined energy efficiency ratio. That's listed because that's a requirement for units that are considered room air conditioners, if you will. And that's how our units are, are considered by the DEA. I'm sorry. The DEA. No. <laughs> Not the DEA. The DOE. <laughs> We don't have to have a drug enforcement agency, but so let's get to the room unit. And those are rated in combined energy efficiency ratio, which is essentially a measurement that includes the watts used when the unit is in standby mode. So if you want to take the S or the CEER and, and estimate the SEER, you add a tenth of a point to the CER, and that will give you a very close representation of the SER. Jack, let me jump back in here real quick. Um, I want to just make clear to everybody on the call, the Maestro product is not an efficiency cell, okay? Because as Jack just pointed out, our efficiency, for example, on the Maestro Pro with inverter compressor and EC motor is 9.74 and so SEER is going to be 9.75 9.7 it's going to be in that so we're not selling this unit based on efficiency and the main reason we don't have a 13 EER rating or CR rating is because we just don't have the coil surface because our unit is very compact 9.1 inches off the wall 35 inches wide it, it, it's 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 a small unit so we're getting the maximum efficiency using an inverter compressor on the Pro uh, and a variable speed motor on that unit to get us what we get. So don't sell this unit based on efficiency uh, because when a contractor hears your 9.74 CEER and you explain what that means, um, they go, well, this unit's not really efficient. That's not what you're selling with this product. You're selling a solution to a problem. They need air conditioning in a garage and now they convert it into a bedroom. They've got a part of the house that doesn't get cold enough with their central air system. Um, they have a, a certain space that they want to do additional cooling to. That's where we fit the bill. Also, when you start talking about sound and ease of installation and those type of things. But please don't lead with efficiency when you guys are doing your sales presentations, okay? All right. Uh, Bruce asked if, uh, you know, what about cottonwood issues? And again, depending on where you are in the country, cottonwood uh, can be a real pain in the neck, but no more so than a condensing unit that's outside that would require the same thing. So we do recommend that the coils be cleaned on a yearly basis, just like any unit. And we do recommend uh, that, and, and again, cleaning these surfaces is not difficult because you just lift the unit off the wall. It's just sitting on a bracket. You just lean it forward a little bit, lift it up, and, and put it on either the floor or on, a, on something that you're using to protect the floor. Take the front body off uh, and, and clean the coils and put it back together and mount it back on the wall. Very quick, very efficient So uh, in terms of time. so and, and this grill that we're looking at, or I should say the grid, Will, will help to mitigate that as well. And the intent of this grid is going to be uh, that it can be removed by either taking the outside grill off or taking the unit off of the wall and just reaching in and pulling it out. 
and then that can be cleaned quite easily as well. So uh, I think you'll find that to be very easy. And and someone keeps asking uh, if I can make them the presenter, and I guess I, I, I certainly can, but uh, uh, we'll just wait till the end of that, and and uh, you know we can see what that is. Uh, Another question, it may sound goofy, but do you offer a personal use discount if a contractor was to put one in his own office? I know we can discount, but I'm just curious, and I'll let Diego answer that. Yeah, we, we would definitely, we've provided to Doug a, a volume-based scale for you guys, so based on the quantity of units that, a certain, uh, that are sold, and of course, our, our hope is that, you know, once we get past this, and I've already talked to Doug about you guys having some local inventory so you don't have to pull from New Jersey warehouse every time. But yeah, we would put together a special price of a contractor said, hey, I'd love to put that in my own, own home. And we've had a lot of that. And that's a great testimonial. So if you do have a contractor interested in that, um, definitely get uh, with Doug and, and I'll, I'll, I'll shoot Doug a, a quick email here after the uh, webinar with what our personal use discount would be. All right. How far inside the unit are the mesh screens? Wondering about ice buildup and freezing, especially without directional louvers on the outside. Again, good question. And, and the answer is as far as is needed. So let's assume you have a wall that's six inches deep. So you've got, if you put it halfway, you're at three inches from the outside. Or if you wanna move one inch from the inside and five inches from the outside. These are going to, my, my vision for these things is that they will be, you know, it's going to be a mesh surrounded by a rubber gasket that would be very easily slid in and pulled out. And so where you put it will be what makes the most sense for your application. And again, in, if you have freezing as an issue, the other thing we're going to have is a, a winter kit and a storm kit, essentially the same thing. And, and we already have that, if you will. So let's say you have a winter mode and you're in a very cold climate and you don't want snow and ice uh, entering the, the, the condensing side of the unit, all right? It's gonna put, you're gonna take the grill off of the outside wall and you're gonna install uh, a cap on that. And the cap will have an inch and a half insulation on it, no problem. And now you have a, a, a cap. Of course, just like people who cover up their condensers in the summertime, you got to remember to take the cap off. You know. <laughs> yeah. I know. Let me touch on, on the freezing. Uh, we have we have an accessory that is available that installs in the condensate drain pan, which is a heating element that avoids in your colder climates like St. Louis um, <laughs> for the condensate to actually freeze. So in, in those colder climates, we do have this as an accessory. It's a heating element that uh, makes sure that there is no freezing of the condensate in the pan. So again, we are compiling a list of accessories that Italy may not have, have developed because the need for it in the markets they've currently been, been uh, addressing is different from that of the United States. So we will have these items in our accessory list. And, and if you come across an item that you think we don't have or an accessory that you think we should have, please let us know about it because we don't know what we don't know. But once we do know, we'll try to get the answer. All right. Have you developed or are you thinking about a display that where we could show this in our showroom simulating an installed unit? And in fact, we have, we have one that we developed for our trade shows. Uh, and I'm sure uh, Diego can work with Doug or the, the folks in, in your uh, world to, uh, to replicate that if you wanted to have one in your specific location or, or one that you could share amongst your branches, we can certainly make that happen. And 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 uh, brute, uh, true, but it should be listed because the industry is going this way. And I'm not sure what that was referencing, uh, Bruce. But if it's one of the, uh, like uh, SEER or EER and HSPF, 
rest assured we will be providing all those numbers. In fact, we are getting a complete AHRI certification done on the unit, which because of how the unit is classified is not required for this unit. However, we understand that contractors, distributors, architects, engineers in the United States all use that AHRI number as, as, as a cornerstone of a decision to use a piece of product. And if you don't have that rating, they may just not even take a look at it because it doesn't have a rating. They don't want to have anything to do with it. So we are, and it's not an insignificant amount of money to get this done, but we recognize that it's a requirement in our market. Yeah, so uh, Tim actually came up with a man, and I have that information on a man as PTAC, which is their STC is 31, ours is 36, their OITC is 20, ours is 25. The higher the number, the better the, uh, the, the rating. And the question from Brian, how long have you been selling in the United States? Uh, I believe we're approaching just about a year now because uh, Diego was brought on board, and correct me if I'm wrong, Diego, but about April of last year. So, uh, yeah, it's been about, it's about two years. We started in uh, 2018. Uh, keeping in mind, guys, we've been selling this for 20 years since 1999 um, in, in Europe. So it, as far as credibility of installed units, we have over 500,000 units installed. Um, in the United States, obviously, we are new, and so the installed base is less, uh, but we can definitely uh, lean on the fact that we've got plenty of units installed in cold, humid, hot conditions, old buildings, new buildings. So uh, I think we've, we've done the field testing to where we're comfortable, but uh, we're just getting started here in the United States, so we're not going to sugarcoat that, but about two years total. So another question from uh, the field is, do you have literature that explains STC and IOTC and what those numbers mean? And the answer to that is yes. And I can provide that to you without a problem. And again, these numbers have a greater impact in, in cities than they do say in, in the countryside. So, uh, you know, but those numbers are valuable and, and can be used to your advantage, whether it's a requirement or not, because Again, when we have the competitive literature that shows our unit is considerably better, another advantage for you. What senses the temperature, the remote or the sensors in the unit? It's the sensors in the unit. So the remote control has a temperature value that essentially is what do you want the room to be? And then there are sensors on the unit that measure what the humidity level is, as well as the uh, dry bulb temperature on the unit. So you can't look at the unit, you can't look at the temperature of the room on the remote. And I think that's all of the questions that I had in that were written down. So if there are no other questions, I'm going to move on because we're we're certainly going longer than we thought, uh, but there have been good questions, so I have no problem continuing. So basically, the, the, everything we talk about installation-wise for the pro is exactly the same for the, I mean, for the smart that we talked about is exactly the same for the pro. So again, you don't have to, uh, let's say you, you had somebody install a smart unit, and then for whatever reason, they decide, you know what, I really should have had a pro unit because of my capacity requirement, they can take the smart unit off the wall, put the, the pro unit on the, 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 the you know, you, you'd probably, the pro unit has a different mounting bracket, but for all intent and purpose, it'll fit on the one for the smart. And, and so you can change from smart to pro in all of about two minutes, okay? And again, it is inverter technology. It is, uh, you know, it says Wi-Fi ready and Bluetooth because we do have those uh, solutions through the factory. And as I mentioned earlier with the Celio, we are going to have what we think is a better option. So silent mode essentially is, is a mode that allows you, we call it both silent mode and sleep mode. So uh, after you set it into silent mode and you, you go into bed and you can have it, it basically cuts back on capacity and 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 by 
compare or, or, or along with that the airflow to just give you a quieter unit in, in when you're sleeping okay so here are uh, you know some of the specifications and and some of the uh, functions and features of the unit and you can see the part number up here the pro is the 0195 and you can see both the heating capacity and the cooling capacity so heat cooling is 11,600 heating is 10,200 and I know the question will come up but uh, you cannot add electric heat to this unit there is no electric heat accessory and and we cannot allow a electric heat accessory because the unit is essentially made of composite plastic material and and uh, that would never get you approval so uh yeah let me let me touch on that jack real quick so in italy the model that we sell equivalent to this does have an electric heat option ul initially when we were going to do the certification was not saying no but they were creating a little bit of concern our generation two of the pro which should be released in about 12 months if not sooner will have a 1kw electric heat option but today we do not have that okay uh so again you can see some of the other features here and you know because we're running a little long on time i'm not going to go through every function but one of the questions that came up was uh, will the unit run for dehum call only? Absolutely. Both units have a dehumidification mode, both the Pro and the Smart. And when set for dehumidification, very similar to what you might see on a uh, mixed split uh, type of unit. Uh, it basically what it does is it lowers the speed of the fan to uh, change the sensible heat ratio to give us a greater amount of latent capacity and we remove moisture while doing very little sensible change. So the temperature of the room doesn't change as much as it would in the cooling mode. The temperature can drop, but especially on the pro where you're, I mean, on the, on the smart, where it's either on or off. And on the pro, it's reducing the capacity of the compressor to be uh, match the reduced airflow of the unit. And so it, the pro definitely controls the humidity without raising or, or lowering the temperature in the room to a better degree than does the smart. All right, so again, I'm not gonna go through all the installation stuff here. I think there were a couple other questions that popped up, one on dehumidification, one on low temp. So what is the lowest rated temperature in heating and do we have a chart to provide to customers on D rate of performance? Again, excellent question. And we basically tell folks that our unit can provide all the, uh, can provide capa heating capacity that is uh, efficient by comparison to electric heat, if you will, down to five degrees Fahrenheit. Below five degrees Fahrenheit, then our recommendation is if, you are, or if you're gonna have significant numbers of hours operational hours below five degrees then you need to have some additional source of heat for those conditions whether it be an electric heater installed in the space separate uh, from the unit whatever that might be uh, and then do we have a curve uh, that we can provide i do have a curve in fact for the smart unit that i can provide that shows you what your capacity will be at the AHRI design condition, so you're up at 47 degrees, 17 degrees, 7 degrees. So I can provide that to you, but again, we tell folks if you're going to have temperatures below 5 degrees, you should have some uh, additional source of heating. For instance, one of our biggest markets that we're hoping to get into is uh, in Alaska. And in Alaska, they don't care whether this a heat pump or not they have no use for it because they provide all the heating they need through either steam hot water they do a lot of uh, you know uh, hydronic uh, some electric but uh, so they want this for the summertime because last year they had almost a month and it, you know because of course the temperatures it seen globally are going up but they had almost a month over 90 degrees so nobody had air conditioning in 
20 years ago. Now everybody wants it, and this is a perfect solution. So again, this shows how to remove the unit and start doing servicing on it. And I'm gonna, there's not much here that I wanna cover today with this group, except for the remote control. Again, one of the things that's different about this remote control than the smart is you have a button down here, bottom right, which changes the format from Celsius to Fahrenheit. Uh, whereas on the smart unit, if you want Celsius, you have to get another uh, op. There is an accessory that can then allow for that. And again, you can see the different functions here. Uh, you know, choice of mode, ventilation speed. So ventilation speed, and I, and I, I can see this is another uh, slide that I'm going to make correction because I'm trying to remove all reference to ventilation here because we do not provide currently any outside air into the space for ventilation purposes. So we're, we're in Europe, they refer to ventilation as the air that's being moved inside. You know, we refer to ventilation as essentially uh, air that's been added to the space to keep energy quality control of air, you know, your the health uh, and, and of the air in check. So uh, on, I will be, and I thought I did this on all of these slides, but I can see I missed this one. Uh, instead of saying ventilation speed, it should simply say fan speed. An oscillating flap, we talked about that earlier. Uh, you know, you have that flap that can go up, down, and you can either set it for full oscillation or you can pick the direction you want it to be and uh, it will it will stay in that direction. And this is just a display of all the different icons you would see. And uh, Hey, Jack, why don't you jump right now? Because again, again, this is a sales presentation, not service. So why don't you give these guys a little bit of a sneak peek on what's coming because just so you guys know, Maestro is just one or two pages of the 50 page catalog that we have at Olympia Splendid. We will be introducing new products every uh, year is our goal. You guys do have access today. One of the other products we stock in our New Jersey warehouse <clears throat> without having to go through slides because it's very simple, our portable air conditioners. I know that these are mostly what you may see at Home Depot and Lowe's and whatnot, but I know that some large distributors like you guys, sometimes there's contractors that wanna buy a portable air conditioner because they're waiting for their central air system and they need, just need some temporary cooling for a customer. So we have those available. It's called our Dolce Clima, which means sweet comfort line in 10 and 14,000 BTUs. Um, so that's something that uh, will be available to you guys and is in stock if you need some. Uh, like I said, some larger distributors, they do carry that. Um, but uh, what I wanted Jack to go to, and you just went by it, Jack, was the B2 Air, our, our two pipe and four pipe chilled water fan coils, which will be coming out uh, probably uh, at the uh, ASHRAE show next year. So January, 2021. And uh, We'll touch real briefly on these without taking any more time because we're well over our time. But this is something pretty exciting that's coming out in 2021. So again, these are the B2 Air is basically a fan coil unit that can be in a variety of, of applications. It can be two pipe, meaning either cooling or heating. So either hot water or chilled water, or it can have both coils to where you can supply simultaneous heating and cooling or in effect have dehumidification with no change in sensible heat for the space. And so you can see it has a variety of offerings here, radiant heat and forced convection, that radiant heat and natural, or cooling with forced convection. So uh, a lot of options. It's very thin. It's 5.1 inches from the wall to the outside of the unit. It can also be installed inside the wall. So uh, you can see the various sizes here. And here you see a couple of applications. It can be mounted low, it can be mounted high. It can also be mounted uh, with what we call the, the B2 Air uh, Naked, which is, it can be mounted flush to the wall or flush to the ceiling. So uh, a lot of options to give you those uh, 
uh, you know, if you have applications that have hot water or cold water already air, you have a solution to give them help for, say, a, a difficult space. So again, questions on the B2 air because we covered it quickly. All right. And then we have our uh, Dolce Clima that, that, that Diego mentioned earlier. And these are portable units. I can tell you that we have some contractors that are recognizing the value of having portable units in their inventory. So let's say you have a customer that's got a three ton system and they have four rooms in the house or whatever, or four areas and, and their unit goes down and it has to be replaced or it has to be repaired, but it might be two days or two weeks before you can get to it. So you take these, these, uh, portable units, you put them in the strategic areas in the house. They, they, it takes about a minute and a half to install. And then you let those run in the space. They have heating and cooling. And then after the unit is repaired, you take them back out. So the smart contractors, if they're doing a replacement, they include the rental of these things in their cost. So I'm going to replace this unit. I'm going to give you these units until they can be replaced. And then there are other contractors that will rent them to a consumer if they're not doing a replacement with them. Okay, here's how much it is per day to rent these units, and then we'll take them back. So uh, these can be quite useful uh, for a contractor uh, for a variety of reasons. And I don't know why, but there were a couple of slides that were not showing up there. Uh, so again, we the Dolce Clima and the B2 Air we covered very quickly, and and uh, but I'm going to open it up now again for questions about any of the products, and uh, so feel free to either uh, call out a question or type it in. So I don't hear anybody uh, uh, chiming in. We answered a lot of questions already. I am, my, you know, my cell phone is 405-664-2075. So if you have questions after we hang up, uh, do not hesitate to call me. And I will do whatever I can to answer the question. If it's not one I can answer, I will get it for you. So uh, if there are no other questions, we'll go ahead and end the session. Thank you all for your time. We very much look forward to doing business with you. We look forward to the end of this uh, COVID virus uh, nonsense so that we can go back to whatever is going to be normal after this. But thank you all, and we'll look forward to working with you. Hey, thanks a lot, guys. Nice job. Thank, thank you. you.